we on? Yeah, we're on. Hey, what's up guys? We're back with a quick little video. Uh, young man in the right Spock had hit me up recently and he's asking me for some help to do some lettering. I have another customer who's asking me about why I always use fat caps and I don't ever use gray dots or anything like that. I was like, what the hell? Let's use some gray dots today. So I got some gray dots, I got some random scrap cans and uh, we'll just talk about the caps and play with them. And a little bit different today. I am forcing myself, I'm putting myself in an uncomfortable position because that's what my videos are all about. Getting you out of your comfort zone, trying something new, something different. So I got a wall here. It's a piece of OSB plywood. This is what they put on your roof when they're building a house, sheathing, things like that. I got a sheet that's four by eight feet, perfect for a practice board. I got it vertical right now, so I only have a four foot wide area. Perfect for a nice thin gray dot cap. I want to start doing some lettering. You know how I like to do that S. Give me a little arrow coming out like that. You guys seeing that there? Let's see if I get that angle right. All right, so that was a great nice shade of gray there that we were using. Again, this is the gray, blue, middle, and the Molotow Premium, article number 178, also sort number 226. Really great shade of gray, very thick, goes on nicely. Uh, now I got a can of Mr. Green, Mr. Green, and we're gonna go ahead and put in our splash with that. All right, sick, so now I got a gray dot and a can of Mr. Green and the Molotow Premium. It's kind of like a mossy shade of green, if you will. Very, very nice shade. Let's go ahead and start lacing in our splash. I like this color, and again, again, this is the gray dot, guys. This is the gray dot. I like this color because it's very natural. It doesn't look like a fake green. And I kind of like those kind of natural, ugly. Kind of like baby puke colors. Yeah, baby puke and baby poop colors are some of my favorites. I'm so scatological, aren't I? <laughs> All right, again, I got that Olympia blue with the gray dot. So let's go ahead and start filling it in. Just go over all that other gray stuff. Erase back all that gray that you put in with the new color, right? All right, sick. So the Olympia Blue's going in wonderfully. Let's go ahead and start getting that filled in. Uh, maybe we'll get some close-up shots of us filling in the Olympia Blue right here. Let's see if we can get a good angle going here. Now the Olympia Blue is a gorgeous shade. I, I would liken it to the color of a beautiful ocean water. Like if you went to uh, Costa Rica or something and went swimming. Well, at least that's my imagination of Costa Rican waters. Maybe it's full of pollution. I don't know, I've never been there. But this is my fantasy of it. It's a beautiful azure blue. I guess azure blue would be the best way to describe it. Although Malto already has an azure blue. Uh, but this is what this shade would remind me of if someone asked me what it looked like. All right, sick, so we got the gray dot with some of that gray-blue middle. Let's go ahead and uh, start filling that in. I think I'm gonna do some like little bits. Some bits in here. All right, I got some Linda's Sunset. I got a can about that full. More than enough to take care of this. Let's go ahead and get cracked. All right, that Linda Sunset looks really, really nice, but let's go ahead and brought something a little bit brighter in there. I got some flame blue with the gray dot, again, with the gray dot, flame blue with the gray dot, and we have fluorescent orange. This is fluorescent orange. Remember guys, this is a fluorescent color. Wow, that's very bright, isn't it guys? Very, very bright. This is a fluorescent orange, but it's covering like an opaque color. It's just so phenomenal. All right, can you guys see me? <laughs> just drop my can. <laughs> All right. All right, you guys see me in there? All right, dope. So I got a can of deep black right here, and I got the gray dot on it, of course, because we're doing a gray dot video. So let's go ahead and get cracking. been a few days actually uh, we got rained out and had to quit the other day then I had to go get emergency tooth surgery it's been a pretty eventful few days who has been behind on the video so my apologies but uh, I'm back 
and we're gonna have a little bit of fun because remember we were doing gray dot piecing on uh, on this piece of plywood we're gonna do some mini piecing so um, I just thought we'd jump back in see what's cracking with that um, and let me kind of go a little go over what we've done so far so what we did was uh, laid out a miniature piece uh, just to show you guys how you can practice at home and uh, just work on your letter style, save a little bit of paint and uh, still get to flex and have a little bit of fun. And it kind of forces you to work in a smaller confine which will help give you better can control. Some of you may know, I prefer to not use thin tips. I tend to paint kind of quick and loose with the fat caps and whatnot. And that's just my natural style. Um, I grew up doing like throw ups and stuff like that. And it's just, I'm more inclined to just do quick get up get your name out there kind of things so it's kind of fun to get out of my comfort zone and mess with some thin tips and stuff and kind of take a little bit of time um, but what's great because with this you can you can do that you can work on your letters you can take some time but then you don't end up using all your paint trying to do fills you know I mean you only use like a tiny bit of your, your cans to do this and you're able to do a full piece so it's a lot of fun and you can use the fancy paint too and you can do it in the safety of your backyard because not everyone is the king of the streets but a lot of people love to try graffiti I'm not going to deny that, you know, and that's one thing a lot of people in the graffiti world are missing out on. Um, there's a lot of people who would be sympathetic to our art form or, or who would be interested in maybe trying it for themselves. Um, but, you know, there's a bit of a, a, how do I say this? I mean, it's a subculture that exists based off of outsider people, you know, so it's a little difficult for them to come around to getting people to think, kind of like how skateboarding was in, when it kind of went out of style in the late 80s, and then it became kind of an outsider thing. I remember that because I was in that, but then it got really cool again, and I, I feel like that's where we're going right now, and so I think people in the graffiti world need to be more uh, willing, to, willing to accept change. I think the kids are. The kids are definitely seeing the change, and they are making the change. It's the old guys. You know, we always talk about the old guys, but... Um, Things are changing, guys. It's a whole new world. And you know what? I like anybody who likes graffiti. That's my that's my mission, right? Is to spread graffiti. I don't care if, if you're a famous graffiti writer or not. I want to see you get up. I want to see the, the average kid. Like, I will always be nice to, like, some 12-year-old kid. Because I remember what it was like to be 12. And I got to I got to talk to pro skaters back then. And I, and I remember the ones who were cool, the ones that were dicks, you know? Tony Hawk was really cool. Steve Caballero was really cool. Jeff Kendall was really cool. Mike Vallely was super cool to kids, you know? And they were some guys that weren't so cool to the kids you know and you know what they didn't they didn't make I don't know I don't know what I'm babbling about one of my <laughs> normal battles but anyways about this piece so um so far what we've done is we've done like the basic letter structure um I've added a few bits uh we got like a little triangle going off of here and uh, I think what that needs is a miniature 3d right just a little bit right there oops a little further than I wanted. No worries, we could fix that. But anyways, we've got the miniature 3D right there just to kind of thicken it up. And we're kind of doing a few different things like that. I got some bits right here. Oh, I had some guy in a recent video who got very upset that I connected my P to the S. And I knew somebody would, and it was kind of a purpose thing. I like to troll a little bit. You know, I like to do weird stuff that people hate. But so this, I, I went ahead and made it even more ridiculous. I brought it from my K over the O all the way in front of the S, so that's dedicated to you, guy. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> but you know what, that's what the thing is that you kids gotta do, is like, I love it when you do letter styles or like weird stuff that kinda pisses off the older guys, because you know, you're kinda changing things up. You're, you're bringing us to a new level, and we need that. Like, we need the new blood to kinda shake us up. It's very, very important to keep your subculture going. And that's the thing, when your subculture becomes so big, it's no longer a subculture, you better start inviting the rest of the people to come enjoy it, you know what I'm saying? Unless you want it to die. Do you want your subculture to die? Because that's what's happening. So, but not, not if I have anything to do with it. All right, sick. Now here's the part where we get to do the shine. So I got some flame blue with the gray dot. So let's go ahead and start lacing some of that in. I'm on a ladder, so bear with me. Little short Cuban legs. Let's go ahead and drop some shines in this bad boy. sick I think we're done with our mini piece it was a great use of the gray dots and a good quick easy way to just flex your letters also you know just spend a little time on the wall like I said you got to work on your craft you got to practice you got to work on your lines and you know sometimes it gets a little bit boring to just do lines edges 
whoop de doos whatever the things that we call them, the bits and whatnot, sometimes you need to practice a little more something substantial. And this is a really great way to go. So as we'll, we'll kind of break down all the steps that I took. First, you know, I did my outline. I didn't use that technique with the tag like last time I wanted you guys to kind of see a different technique. And we'll go into a little bit more detail on that in a second. Uh, then I did my fill. Uh, and then I did some striping and I did some little like little electrical things going through here. One thing you might want to notice is uh, what I like to do is I'll, I'll do like a diagonal line like this and the kind of organic line going underneath it and then coming out of it just to kind of give it a little more depth. And again, this is no cutbacks really, just very, very simple and easy. Um, and you can kind of see you doing that right there. You know, it's a lot of fun. But again, real, real basic piecing letters. And of course, I threw this ridiculous thing here just to annoy the YouTube commenter because how I roll. <laughs> And honestly, I kind of like it, so <laughs> what are you going to do? You know, you do you do you when you do your graffiti. That's that's the best way I can describe it. I like it simp simple and quick and easy and just the way I roll. And, you know, I think it's, a, it's not intimidating for young people. And that's the whole thing. I don't want to be intimidated to young artists. I want them to feel inspired. And, uh, you know, and they'll learn with me as I do, as I move along on this process. But anyways, I think that'll be it for now. Let's, uh, let's uh, move on to another step and I'll maybe just do a quick pan of the wall real quick here. You guys can see that. Looking really good. Just a simple piece for one of my customers that writes Spock. Oh, hey, what's going on? Well, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? We got to get out, paint a little mini piece, practice a little bit, get a little ups, and uh, create a little content for you guys. You know, it's been really hard because I've been trying to think of new ways to create content. Because, I mean, how much can you play out the whole Bob Ross thing? You know, so that's why I've been trying vlogging, I've been trying skits, I've been trying just all kinds of shit, really. Just riffing and talking and, you know, it's kind of like this jazz music right here. This is kind of how I'm rolling. Free flowing, going. Is this John Coltrane? I think so. Just free flowing, going, and doing the show, you feel me? I just want to say thanks for watching our videos. Also, I want to give a shout out to my two favorite colors from the video. I had some shock blue in the fluorescent orange and the flame blue. Is that facing the right way? I can't see the screen. It's too small. <laughs> but it don't matter. You know what these are. Flame blue and Molotow. Excellent combination. Um, you guys are asking about other brands. Yes, soon. I'm hoping I can get some stuff sent to me. Maybe some Montana Gold, maybe some Iron Lack. Hello guys, hint, hint. Send me stuff to, to review. <laughs> Was that obvious or what? Send me some shit. <laughs> but I'll review it and I'll be honest. You know what I'm saying? I want to review the new gold stuff and I'd like to review the latest batch of Iron Lack. I've heard it's quite good. But I will be the judge of that. <laughs> Anyways, thanks a lot for watching our videos. We're artprimo.com, 206-365-4083. Again, 206-365-4083. That's artprimo.com, your number one source for all your graffiti supplies.